Hi guys, welcome back. This morning, Asia is slightly subdued. I mean, nothing alarming, but about a half a percent cut here and there across most markets. China is also a bit tentative. There is a speech that Xi Jinping will be, the Chinese president will be giving this morning about the country's economic reforms. Ahead of that, the Chinese market is a bit under pressure, down almost about half or percent or so. As we've been telling you, the U.S. markets have seen their worst cut in uh, many years. In fact, the S&P 500 is down more than 6% in the month of December, one of the worst performing indices across the board, uh, underperforming even the Emerging Markets Index. But our research team is standing by to give you the list of top 10 stocks as we head into trade today. Uh, Reema joins and she has a motley bunch of stocks on her list. Let's go across to her. Hi, Reema. Morning. Hi, Tony. Yeah, good morning. Let me start with uh, SBI Life because there are reports which suggest that Carlyle is edged ahead in the race to acquire PNB Paribas Cardiff stake. So PNB Paribas holds about a 22% stake, but in the first tranche, they're looking to sell about 10% stake, and Carlyle could be uh, the winner in that. Though that said, Temasek and KKR are also in the race. Tata Motors, again, agencies report that Jaguar Land Rover has hired BCG or Boston Consultancy Group for the $3.2 billion turnaround plan. For Tata Steel, it's just one step forward in the entire merger process with Tyson Crew because they have announced the executive leadership for their planned joint venture. And finally, Glenmark, the company has announced that new data on GBI 1302 um, has been presented at the Immuno Oncology Congress 2018. So positive, I guess. Back to you. Okay, thanks a lot for that. In fact, many of these pharma stocks have been the big gainers over the last many days. Yesterday as well, Glenmark was up almost about 2.5% and the volume action was also pretty good over there. The loan waiver uh, that has been cleared by uh, Kamal Nath, that will also be in focus. Remember, loans of farmers up to 2 lakhs will be waived off. We'll talk about that as well. But before that, Anisha also joins in to talk about some more stocks in the news. Anisha? Good morning, Sonia. I'll start with Graphite India because there's the positive news as the Karnataka Karnataka Pollution Board has allowed the company to recommence operation. They have renewed the consent. However, they have given a caveat that the company will have to shift its location. So, a tad bit of breather coming in for the company. Moving on to Bombay Dine, wherein company has closed all the loss-making operations in Indonesia. They have provided for all the losses and the provisions necessary. And this should be a good news given uh, the losses go away for the company. Moving on to Ashoka Bilkon, wherein the board is proving, uh, has approved raising of 150 crores via NCDs. And this is for the city gas distribution business. Remember, it is uh, small in size as of now, but nonetheless a positive. In fact, Edelweiss has also written a note on that, and they say that it is a positive development. Okay, well, uh, let me just uh, add a word on the farm loan waiver. The uh, initial reaction for banking stocks is usually positive. It's positive because uh, uh, the loans which ought to have been repaid by farmers will now be repaid by the state government, which is, uh, you know, a healthier uh, uh, entity, uh, ought to have more money. So for the banks, uh, what may have become NPAs will now become standard loans because the state takes charge of them. So you may see some positivity because of this in, <coughs> say, SBI, BOB, PNB, actually the entire PSU lot, but I don't know uh, if all of them will be, uh, you know, equally uh, hydrated because of this. The anticipation that Chhattisgarh and other states will also see farm loan waiver announcements is going to keep uh, <coughs> state-owned banks somewhat positive. But uh, does it, doesn't it reflect poorly in terms of credit culture, etc.? I mean, oh, yes, is it is a long-term negative. Yeah. Most bankers will tell you we would rather live with the NPAs now yeah. rather than give the impression that every loan given will be waived a few years down the line. That's not good for banking business generally. Yeah. But the initial... Uh, 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 impact on PNL is positive because the money comes back from state governments. Actually, this is very long drawn. By the time you recognize who are, uh, you know, farm loan uh, uh, borrowers, because there are borrowers, they could have taken the loan for, you know, consumption. Mm. If unless you're able to prove it is a farm loan, you don't get the waiver. So it takes a very long time, sometimes you know two, three quarters to identify the borrowers and then repay. Okay. But the market could react positively as soon as the announcement comes because it is a distant. Uh, uh, you know, th two, two, three quarters down the line, it's a positive. Those N expected NPAs will not materialize. Just a word more on Kotak Mahindra Bank. Uh, there could be some positivity in that because of some details we got 
from uh, the uh, court proceedings yesterday. What we knew during market hours was that the 21st, the 31st December deadline has not been stayed. So Kotak would be violative of RBI rules as of Jan 1st, 2019. But the other proceedings in the court were our, uh, the Kotak Council requested that uh, they get a stay on RBI penalties. Mm. The judge said, I will not say that. And to which the RBI Council replied, RBI is a responsible organization. Now, this indicates that if at all there is any uh, you know, retribution from RBI, it won't be a severe one. Mm. So perhaps yesterday's short positions could be covered. Okay, so we'll keep an eye out on that. Uh, Kotak was the uh, one of the big losers yesterday, down almost 3%. But there are a whole host of brokerages uh, that have written uh, notes on individual stocks. Ekta is here to give us the lowdown on all of that. Hi, Ekta. Morning. Hi, morning, Sonia. I'll start with Kotak, which is written on TechM. They've reiterated their ad rating. TechM reiterated in an investor meet that telecom business growth potential is of 5 to 7% in FI20 without 5G contribution. Uh, Kotak believes predictability is returning in operations and financial operations as well. CLSE on pharma, the growth in the domestic market has slowed to 6% due to seasonal impact in November versus October. They expect the domestic market to witness 10 to 12% growth in FI19 based on current trends. Nomura has written on Con Concor where they maintain a buy with a target price of 800 rupees. Railways have cut the haulage charge for empty containers and empty wagons by 25%, which is a key positive according to them for Concor. Jefferies has written on consumer finance, tighter funding to developers, oversupply issues may create asset quality pressures at NBFCs, housing finance companies, banks with developing developer exposure. So they prefer niche financers with limited developer exposure such as MMFS, uh, strong parentage such as HDFC, LIC housing finance, private corporate banks such as Axis and ICICI Bank. And Edelweiss has also written on Sri Ram Transport, target price 1422. They would like to re-pitch Sri Ram, Sri Ram Transport despite tightening liquidity scenario. Uh, due to growth visibility, expectation of moderation in credit costs, comfortable liquidity position, attractive valuations. And lastly, on Ashoka Buildcon, Edelweiss has a buy target price 201 rupees. Uh, com the company is committed to 150 crores equity in city gas distribution arm, and that's a positive development according to them. All right, thanks a lot, uh, Ekta, for that. Let's do one thing. Let's take a quick break on that note. Some uh, flashes coming in on the commentary from the Chinese President Xi Jinping on economic reforms, economic reconstruction, etc. His speech has just begun. We'll a take a historic quick break. day for them yeah. because it was in 1978 on the same day that Deng Xiaoping announced uh, the starting of open openness, uh, private, uh, privatizing of uh, economic activity, basically out of the communist mold. Yeah. So that's why 40 years uh, of uh, liberalization, okay. 40 years of economic reform is very big for them. I mean, it launched China, uh, those reforms, uh, into uh, a superpower, a superpower yeah. absolutely. And today, the second largest economy in the world, so obviously a very historic day. Okay, I, I didn't uh, look at it like that, but yes, of course, it's a really big day for them today. Let's see if he talks about slowdown because mm. that's the big concern, right? Global slowdown and the Chinese slowdown and the impact it would have on global trade. Let's do one thing. Let's take a quick break. Plenty of technical tips lined up. Sudarshan Sukhani, Mitesh Thakkar and Prakash Gaba will join in.